All right, all right, all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be taking a look at researching our competitors. Um, some of the questions we're going to be able to answer after working on this project is, uh, well, we're going to be creating a dictionary by collecting the partial or total inventory of our competition. I say partial or total because depending on what kind of stuff you're selling, it's not unlikely that there's going to be people with 10,000, 30, 50,000, however many um, items up for sale. And obviously, if you have 10,000 different sellers who you're in competition with, all of them having 10,000 items or however many, it's going to take a long time to evaluate all that. So you might want to elect to collect only the partial inventory. So some of the questions we're going to be able to answer are who specifically am I in competition with? We're going to get a list of sellers and some details about each seller uh, that will be pertinent to what we're going to be doing in our uh, project. Uh, and there's other stuff that you can get about the seller, like their location, what times of day do they post their stuff at. You can determine is it automated based on stuff like that. Um, although I'm not going to do that myself, but we will get some details about each seller. Then we're going to look at um, uh, whether there is or is not a correlation between feedback score and the number of product sales for a specific product. Um, or what about the number of total sales for that seller as a whole. Um, in general, you can say yes, there is going to be a correlation. A person with greater feedback is going to have a greater amount of sales. but. Depending on what that product is, a lot of people don't care if you got 10 feedback or 10,000 feedback. If you've got a certain item, they need it badly enough that they're going to buy it, which is going to help you determine is this certain product something I should or should not sell or what have you. Next, we're going to look at uh, should I list a specific item as a buy it now or as an auction based on what my competition is doing. Then we're going to say, uh, how many competitors do I have for a specific item? Um, then we're going to say, which products have a high number of sales but a low number of competitors? So that way I'll be more interested in selling a specific product if it's got a bunch of sales and not that much competition compared to vice versa where there's not that many sales and a lot of competitors. So you can, if you know, if you've got a limited amount of products that you're allowed to sell every month, you don't want to list up 80 of those items and have a ton of competition because then you're going to be reducing the amount of stuff you're going to really allow yourself to sell or make sales of. So next we're going to say what categories should I shift towards and what categories should I shift away from? So if we find out that, again, if I'm only allowed to sell 100 items per month, and it turns out that there's a ton of people selling bottled water or something like that and you know maybe let me shift away from selling the bottled water or let me shift away from uh, the bug repellent or let me shift away from window fans and shift towards something else for whatever the reason may be um, now we have what are some of the top keywords for a winning category or for a winning product. Um, if a product is in power tools, we can see that there's different uh, keywords within power tools that are going to be more popular than others, which is going to help us determine what's a specific power tool or a specific brand or specific is it a power tool that we're going to use for cars, is it a power tool that we're going to use for woodworking, uh, etc indoor for outdoor uh, stuff like that uh, what are the top selling categories that I'm not selling that my competitors are um, so if if I'm sourcing from Home Depot and I, I've got a bunch of competitors who are selling a lot of the same stuff as me but they're also selling a bunch of stuff that I'm not selling and they're making a bunch of money off of it I can identify what some of that stuff is so that I can say oh I had no idea that bug repellent was one of the best sellers uh, right now which may or may not be true I don't know um, I think it is but that's I looked that up a long time ago so it may be different 
<clears throat> so anyway, okay. So what are the top products that my competition is selling? Not just categories, but specific products. Um, so is it a DeWalt power drill or is it a uh, some other brand power drill? Which one is more popular than the other? You know, is it because of the because of the category or is it because of the brand? You know, uh, etc. Um, we can find out what winning products are available at my source by collecting the UPC code using using regular expressions. Um, based on sales history, which products are more likely to be profited from? So what does that mean? Based on sales history, which products are more likely to be profited from? Uh, I think that means uh, if there's a bunch of sales, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm probably actually not going to end up doing that in this video um, because that would, <clears throat> you can actually combine this vi or this project with one of the previous projects and you say, first, is this product um, available on Home Depot, yes or no? Yes, it is. Okay, let me get the price for it. Okay, it's eight ninety nine, but it's selling like hotcakes for fifteen ninety nine on eBay. Okay, there now I know that it's likely to be profitable uh, of an item versus if it's eight ninety nine on uh, Home Depot, which is my source, but it's selling like hotcakes for five ninety nine. Then it's like, well, no, that there's really nothing I can do with this product. So anyway, um, and then we can look at our sellers and say which sellers make the most number of sales and who's making the most uh, dollar amount in sales. And I can determine lots of different things by that. Um, you know, what tactics do these different sellers use? Again, is there stuff, uh, are they posting stuff in an automated fashion? You know, if I, if I see that everything's going up, if there's 100 items going up in one minute, I can say, okay, well, this guy's obviously posting stuff using software. Um, if it's if it's one item every three or five or ten minutes, I can say, okay, he's doing stuff by hand, so maybe he's putting more time and effort into these things, which might uh, equate to better sales. So these are just some of the questions that we're going to be able to answer. And the dictionary that we're going to use to answer these questions uh, is as follows. And it might not be exactly the same thing by the time I get done working with it, but this is what I've put together so far. Um, so we've got the dictionary that I'm going to call competitors, DCT underscore competitors. And the first item um, on the dictionary, the name of the seller. So if the guy calls himself the DIY Depot, you can almost kind of figure, okay, he's probably drop shipping off of Home Depot. Let me dedent that. Okay. All right. Then um, the value for the seller name is going to be the key, which is uh, strings as we can see. Number of 90 days sold. So this is the number of items he sold in 90 days. These are uh, fake values. This is not a real seller. This is just stuff that I put in that uh, should sort of be realistic. Um, so let's say he's got 786 items sold in the last 90 days, but then 1721 unsold. And we can say $5,874.94 in 90 day sales. Uh, then let's say his feedback score is 4360. Um, the next uh, key is his actual inventory. Um, I only have one item in here. Again, this is just as an example. So let's say the first item in his inventory is the UPC X is what I call it because it starts with the letter X. I use that because when I'm looking at my CSV sheet uh, or my Excel sheet, sometimes it tries to convert my UPC code into uh, like a different type of notation and it messes it all up so I just put a letter X at the beginning so anyway if this is the UPC code as the key then the value is we got the product title this is not going to be the actual product title available from the Home Depot website or wherever the source is this is going to be the title that he listed it as on eBay um, so let's say we've got a DeWalt cordless power drill charger and bits um, and that the product category is a tuple where this is the uh, the category code just for example that might not be a real category code and then the category name which is power tools am I selling this item to uh, true or false I'm gonna say just for example true 
then what's the dollar sales that this person has made off of this item? $1,500, wow, that's definitely an excellent item. If, if this one UPC code has brought in in 90 days $1,500 worth of sales, it might be definitely worth looking into, especially uh, if it's available at the source that I'm sourcing from. So then we're going to have a list of similar categories um, so that we can figure out some other things. So 6600 tools, 6601 cordless power tools, 6602 drills and drill bits. Again, these are not real values. It's just stuff that would make sense. Uh, now we have results sold. And so we want to say the amount he might have sold 19 and 17 of which were at buy it now, two of which were at auction. So we can say, okay, this guy sold 19 of these items and they're selling tremendously better at buy it now prices than at auction or vice versa, which will help you determine, should I sell mine at buy it now or should I sell it at auction? If it's selling higher at auction, you know, what's the starting price and should I sell mine at a similar starting price, etc. Then listing time and days. So sold, so this would be, for example, out of the last 10 items, um, I believe there's 10 items in this list. Out of the last 10 items, it's sold in zero days, and then four days, and then one, and then five, and six, and so on and so forth. And these are the prices, for example, that he sold it at, at $129 for all of these. So um, there's going to be sellers who have them sold, listed at different prices, which will make a difference in how many days it gets sold in. Um, we'll be able to figure out details about that. And this uh, results unsold and results active is the same thing as results sold. It's going to have all the same uh, keys and values. I just chose not to write it out. So this is our dictionary of the stuff that we're going to um, collect from our competitors. What we're going to do is we're going to um, if you already have a list of inventory, if you already have a list of stuff that you're selling, um, what we're going to do is we're going to say for every item in my list of inventory items, uh, let me collect all the sellers who are selling the same thing active and who sold it, um, which would be completed. Um, and then what you can choose to do is get all of their inventory again uh, you can either get just what's for this seller what's in relationship to the inventory that you have or all of his inventory so you're not just looking how to make your own stuff better but how to um you're not just looking how to make your own items uh optimized by keywords and whatnot but also you want to figure out what other items to sell that you aren't already selling so this is again what we're going to be taking a look at in the next video um, so this is just the introductory video we're gonna get down into the code and everything and um, and that's gonna be researching our competitors I think that's all that I have to say so let me end that video now and uh, in the nearish future I'm going to get started on that hopefully sooner than later I hope to see you there please give me a like and a subscribe and let's keep going